Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show why America is not ready for electric cars. Now I've been saying that for years. There's no infrastructure. This country is not ready to add all these electric cars to the power grid. And recently, events in Texas have proven me exactly 100% correct. From cold weather coming into Texas, especially my old hometown, Houston, knocked the entire system down. Space heaters were plugged in, it got browned out and then blacked out by just a little bit of electric heat. And realize this, if you have a fast charger at your house that does 220 volt charging of an electric car, that's equivalent to running five full ceramic space heaters all at the same time. Now in the state of Texas, there's 22 million cars driving around. Let's say even half of those are electric cars, 11 million. What would happen to the electric power grid if those things were being plugged in and 11 million cars plugging in at night to the mix and oh voila, you'd have darkness everywhere. Now money doesn't grow on trees and electricity doesn't come out of thin air. With no infrastructure, electric cars are a laughing joke. But it's not just the availability of power, it's how electric cars work. Most modern electric cars are running on batteries. A lot of them are lithium ion, they still have a liquid inside and it gets slushy and it doesn't conduct electricity, either it gets really cold or really hot. So I'm talking both ends here, but mainly cold now. One, when it's really cold, they lose range. A new guy in Quebec, he lost 30% range on his car. Manufacturers claim it's 20%, but you know how they lie about everything. And of course, that's on a brand new vehicle. As they age, the batteries lose their power storage and power delivery availability. You're being filmed now on a Panasonic that's got lithium ion batteries in it. And from my experience of filming for years and years and years, I'm lucky if I get maybe two and a half, three years out of those batteries before they crap out and they don't last very long. Then the system itself starts lying to me. It'll say, I've got 45 minutes of shooting time left. And four minutes later, the camera turns it off. And when you turn it back on, it says battery low and it turns itself back off again. Well, most electric cars have lithium ion batteries in them. They have a limited lifespan. They even cheat on that because they'll say, oh, it's still running. Yes, but not at the efficiency that it was running before. Before. They lose their efficiency. So the range that you have that's already limited because it's cold outside and you might lose 20%. If it's an old battery, you might lose 40%. And when we go inside a gasoline car and start it up, even though it's cold outside, if you're like the guys in Houston and Dallas, you can heat yourself up. Take this Lexus, for example. With a full gas tank, idling with the heater on, can run about three days idling with the heat on. And when you see the fuel gauge is getting low, go to a gas station, fill it back up, and you can continue to heat yourself. Well, let's say you were unlucky enough to be in Houston or Dallas when the power went out. If you had an electric car, it's only going to heat for so long and you cannot recharge it if there's no power in the area. Now, this is why you'd be better off having a hybrid instead of a full electric car. Because the hybrid, you can use whatever you want. And when the battery gets low, the engine comes back on and starts charging things up. They can actually sit even longer. If you had like a Toyota Prius, I had a friend in Canada that used it when the heat went out and his cabin and he said he had a full tank of gas and with the battery charged he could warm himself up in that thing for well over a week without having to buy any more fuel. Just think about it, gasoline cars have been around a long time. They can take all kinds of weather. Take my Celica. It's been sitting here for weeks and weeks unused, covered with snow and ice. But what happens when you try to start it? As you can see it's untouched by human hands. It's got almost a quarter of a million miles. It's a 1994, it's old, but gasoline doesn't freeze. Let's see if it starts up. Sitting all that time. Well, let's hope the lock isn't frozen. Ha! It's not frozen. Door is slow. Let's try the other side. Voila! All right, let's see if it starts. Ha, ha, ha. Tried and true technology. Now the only thing that might have let us down was the battery. You heard it cranked a little slow because they have batteries. Now they're not lithium ion, they're just plain old lead acid batteries. It did start it right up after it sat here a really long time. I'd love to see if an electric car that was 24 years old would be able to just get up and go in this weather after it sat for months on use. Look, the Swedes have come to rescue us. It's a Volvo. 
But is it an electric Volvo? As Volvo says, they're gonna make in the future only electric cars and they're already switching to hybrid electric cars. It's a big old diesel powered Volvo. Now they keep saying that they're coming out with these marvelous new batteries to run electric cars. Realize that in electric cars, they still have a liquid part of it where the electrons flow and it gets cold outside. It thickens up just like oil and doesn't work as well. And they're talking about how they're gonna make solid state batteries that won't require the liquid electrolyte. Now there already are some out there, but the problem is they only have a limited usage and a limited amount of power and they don't last all that long. For instance, I bought a solid state battery with no electrolytes for my Triumph and it did start the motorcycle. Within a year and a half it went totally bad and it was no good. So I switched it to a normal lead acid battery and it starts fine. But on the other hand, this old Suzuki, I put the same battery in six years ago and it still works. But that's because it has a much lower power requirement to start than the Triumph. The Triumph is a 900cc two-cylinder engine. It takes a lot of power to pump those up and down. Well, the Suzuki, it's only a 600cc four. It has much less pressure to crank over than the big Triumph. So it still worked. Cars are a lot harder to crank over than motorcycles are. And as it stands today, these solid state batteries really are not any good for just starting an internal combustion engine, no less driving an entire electric vehicle. Realize gasoline in many cases is much better than electricity. To give you another example, my son's got an electric leaf blower. Guess what happened when I tried to use it this morning? The battery was dead because it's cold outside. So I get my gasoline leaf blower, starts right up. And I can use my gasoline powered leaf slash snow blower to get the snow off the van so I can start the gasoline powered van to go to the grocery store. Now I'm not some kind of Luddite who hates machines, hey I'm a mechanic, but even when I use electric tools, I like 120 volt ones that plug into the wall and I get a giant extension cord. I don't like the battery powered ones. Invariably they let you down and run out of power when you need it. Electric can work fine when it's plugged in, but you can't plug your car in and drive it around, you'll be limited by oh, 100, 200 foot extension cord, right? So that's not gonna work out. Now realize that less than 1% of the vehicles in America on the road are electric vehicles, less than 1%. And of course, there's various reasons for that. Nobody knows who's gonna win the electric car race. Is it gonna be a deal like the Chinese have experimented with quite a bit, where you don't even own the battery in your car, you just lease it by the month. And just like when you run out of propane, paying for your barbecue, you go to a station and they just pull the battery pack out of your car and put another one in that's fully charged and you don't have to deal with any of the crap of recharging it. But here again, there's the question of infrastructure. You're gonna need an awful lot of those exchange stations if millions of people have electric cars and then they would have to be standardized. Each company would have to make the same type of battery that fit in. It would be a giant rat's nest. That's why as far as I'm concerned, electric cars that run off of hydrogen fuel cells make more sense. They would all be powered by the same thing, hydrogen. Now you'll say, well, there's no hydrogen infrastructure. Yeah, there isn't, but that can be built up too. And they're already working on it in Texas. It creates one third of the hydrogen already made in the United States. And don't think that those guys with their engineers aren't gonna figure out a way of making money on that one. Then all cars would just have the hydrogen fuel, that's all. They'd all be the same. You don't have to worry about, does this battery fit that? Does this charging system fit that? If it's cold out, it won't recharge right. It's just hydrogen. It's gonna work perfectly fine in any situation. You don't have a battery that's affected by the cold not getting enough power because you're turning hydrogen into electricity and water vapor. You're not dealing with any of the crap that you get from lithium ion batteries or any other type of battery. And you know, now the government in the United States at least is pushing all this electrical crap on people, right? Like what do they know about running anything? A bunch of lawyers and bureaucrats. Probably the last people on earth that you would want coming up with ideas to try to make things work. Now I'm sure there's gonna be a certain amount of electric cars coming up. As time goes on, it'll go up somewhat. Who's to say which model is gonna win the race? Cause the race has only begun. There's all kinds of battery technology that might work, that might not work. Fuel cell 
cells that may work great or they might not work at all when they're mass produced and of course there's always cheapskates like me that hey if you want an electric car some clown's gonna make kits for these things where you can take a nice little car throw away the engine and transmission and put in an electric motor and a battery in the trunk and it isn't gonna cost you a hundred thousand dollars either so my advice about electric cars is wait till the dust settles don't go rushing in one of my neighbors in Houston did bought a Model S Tesla for $126,000 then he found out that it wasn't what he wanted so he sold it well with 15,000 miles on it and he paid $126,000 he only got 45 grand cash when he sold that car believe you me America is not ready for mass production and mass sales of electric cars so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.